Hi and welcome back. My name is Emily and this video is for Trinity stamps. I will use a stamp set called Mouse House for my project today and I will also use the Slimline dies and I will of course have everything listed down below. And I have been having this idea in my mind for quite some time now to create this card and I finally had the time to do it. So I hope you will enjoy this project. I will start out by uh, stamping all my images that I will be using for this project. You can see I pretty much colored in and stamped all uh, the images that was in this stamp set. And you will see how much images I will be needing to create my project. I always like to have a lot at hand. And then I cut them out with the coordinating dies uh, that you can buy separately. And I will also say that I use a combination of uh, Spectrum Noir markers and my Copics to color the images in. And that is my favorite choice of medium to color in images. Now I took the Scenic Borders, that is a part of uh, the Seamline card series from Trinity Stamps. And I used the grassy borders here. And I love that it has this stitched detail. I always think that that finish of every homemade card so nicely. And I will use a combination of two colors. This is the uh, Twisted Citron and the Moved Lawn. And of course I'm using the blending brushes from Trinity Stamps. That is my favorite tool to use when I'm blending ink. And you can see that it is a little bit splotchy at some parts. That is because I'm using a pretty heavy hand. My ink pad was quite dry, so I needed to use a lot of pressure to get the ink on to the cardstock. So if you would do this, you probably wouldn't need to use that much pressure and the impression would be smoother. But you will see here that with the splatters and everything, it will not be notice noticeable when the card is finished. So for my sky, I wanted to create a spring feeling. Uh, so I picked a light pink color. This is called Spun Sugar, also a Distress Ink. And I will use a pretty heavy hand here as well. And the same blending brushes. I actually keep one for every color family. Uh, but if you don't have the opportunity to have that many brushes, you can always clean them off with some with a baby wipe and a dry cloth between. Uh, that works uh, perfectly uh, as well. So here I'm doing the same thing. I'm creating some splatters. That is just helping the blend to blend the ink and also to create a little bit more interest. So here I am pulling out all my images that I previously colored in. And now I want to try to lay them out uh, how I think I want to assemble this card. As you can see, nothing is glued down or uh, properly adhered to this cardstock. So you can just have a play and see what you want every image to go. And here is also the opportunity to see if you have to cut out and color and stamp some more images. This is the time to do it before you start to gluing and adhering stuff down. Because once you are doing that, you're going to be limited to what you have. It's really hard to peel off a card like this without ripping it. Of course, you can do it if you do it carefully, but I wouldn't recommend it. So uh, make sure that you are um, uh, knowing what you want to do with the card. And also, uh, if you need to cut any images out and color them, this is time to do it. So here's a trick that I have learned uh, during these years of creating scene card like this. I will take my phone and just take a picture of everything when it's laid out the way I think I want to have it. And then I can refer back to this image later on when I'm uh, trying to assemble everything. Because now I actually have to take everything apart and you can see that I cut uh, the grassy borders with a stitched the same stitching as I have on my background, just to make everything look cohesive. So now we'll use a mix of mm -hmm. liquid glue and um, some uh, foam. I have a large roll of uh, scotch foam tape and I will use a combination between these two uh, to adhere my images down. 
And the feeling I was going for, I told you previously, but I wanted this to look like a spring and happy card. But there was all of these mushrooms in this set and I really thought they were pretty and that I tied in well with with a little mouse house. So I wanted to make sure that I had a lot of that red going on on this card. So I hope you get the feeling of spring even though it maybe is some fall items that I am using here. But I think it turned out super pretty and I think um, the green... The greenery that I used uh, like flying around I wanted it to look like uh, uh, small like could you say seeds from small plants that are just starting to bloom and like giving away their 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 seeds <laughs> I hope you can say that but anyway I, as you can see my scene is starting to look okay and I just have some finishing touches to do here and there and then this card is soon uh, finished with uh, this part and you can see that it really turned out great it's quite busy uh, and I know that when I cut out all of these images that I probably would be using a lot of them but I always think that it's good that you have a lot of uh, options when you're creating so you don't like realize halfway through a project that you don't have any images to fill so uh, that is really my tip of uh, how to and take on a project like this. It probably is more tips, but this is my tip for you. So here is a still shot of how it looked and here comes, sorry my camera wasn't focused there, um, the gluing down part of um, this. I love that this gives a little white border. It also helps this car to pop a little bit more and it calms it down a little bit if that makes sense. And I really, really like how this turned out. I will use a sentiment from the same stamp set that says have a mouse day. I think that is super cute and very well uh, fitted with this card. And I think this could go with any, with any occasion. You can make it a birthday card or a happy card or a friendship card or whatever you want to do it. So here you can see I'm going in with two types of gel pens. First I'm going in with a black one just to uh, intensify the noses and the eyes of the mouses <laughs> that was a mouthful to say and also a white gel pen that I'm going in making some dots and lines I'm creating a little bit more interest here I'm dotting on some dots on the snails and I also making some lines to create shadows uh, or where the light should hit the images and I can also clean up my images if I had gotten some alcohol markers where I, outside the lines I can just clean them up with this gel pen. I finished this card off with some sequins also from Trinity Stamps and of course everything will be linked down below. So I hope you liked this project. If you did I would be really happy if you subscribe to the channel and also maybe considering giving it a thumb up or giving us a comment. That would be really nice. Until next time have a great day. Bye!